when stem cells fir first hit the airwaves, um, the challenge was finding the right source of these cells that could meet the scale and economic requirements of a big deployable therapy. Um, we, our company, which was acquired by Cellgene and became the cell therapy division, pioneered the use of the postpartum placenta as the source of these cells. Right. And as you can imagine, compare a, the size of a placenta to an embryo. It's, it's orders and orders of magnitude more. more abundant. Okay. So, so those cells are powerful for everything from treating cancer to degenerative diseases. Well, that's the part that, that, uh, that is sort of novel to me. I don't know if we knew this 30 or 40 years ago, uh, Peter, that, that as you age, your stem cell population declines. And so in a 70-year-old person, there are still stem cells that are needed to do, to do what for, for you? They, as, they, as the population shrinks, that, that adds to your, your aging? Or, or so, you know, we, we go through a process of continual renovation and renewal. That's why we morph from a young form to an older form. During that process, we actually deplete, we exhaust the reservoir of stem cells that drives that renovation process. Plus, that reservoir of stem cells becomes corrupted. And, and Peter and I talk about this a lot. Your stem cell is your master boot disk. It, re, it contains the full, transcribable, uncorrupted genome. Right. <clears throat> and that's necessary to maintain your health. Wow. So uh, how do we, it just sounds like this is clinical. I don't know how this ever gets to the, to the bed, to the bedside. Well, for, I mean, for... uh, listen, Bob has a team of 120 scientists that were incubated at, at uh, a cell gene. We have three amazing companies that Bob can talk about that backed us. Uh, and they, you know, Celgene invested some $500 million draking it to this point. Uh, the company is, is Bob's research and his team's research identified that the, the thing of the placenta is the 3D printer that prints the baby. It has the richest yep. source of stem cells. And those stem cells and the uh, immunological cells can be used for fighting cancer, can be used for fighting autoimmune disease. Yep can be used ultimately for regrowing organs. You know, I, my two boys. So, should, should we save these? Did you save cord blood, uh, Andrew? I did. Or, okay, so we did, but you, need, you say we need to do more. We so, need to save placental? Like, when, my, when my children were born six and a half years ago, we saved their placental stem cells with LifeBank, which is the vision of this company, LifeBank USA. And I think it's a moral and ethical obligation for any parent to stay, to save not just their cord blood, it but the placental the, cells. It expands the number of, of not, things you could... Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so, so placental cells are far more versatile and capable of doing a lot more things. And we've invested a tremendous amount, as Peter points out, in driving the technology to eventually use them to regrow our spare parts. I tell families, if your baby was born with an extra set of lungs and an extra set of kidneys, would you throw them out at birth? <laughs> and the ob obvious answer is no. So placental stem cells are a cornerstone of being able to uh, deploy them in everything from engineered organogenesis to creating immune cells that can combat your That's cancer. What, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and we don't know all I had a baby a year, year ago. We yeah. didn't do that. I think yeah. we just yeah. did the core People blood. don't know well, that. And I think, I think that they but, but, but stay tuned, stay tuned. There's technology that we're actually developing right now to even make cord blood cells act like placental cells. Yep. But the interesting thing is, Cellularity is a synthesis of some great companies, Celgene, United Therapeutics, uh, Sorrento Therapeutics, and Human Longevity came together to create a tool set that allows us to do virtually everything with these cells.